All right, let's call the City of Marine City Commission meeting to order uh, Thursday, December 7th, 7 p.m. Can we please stand for prayer from Pastor Brian, please? Hello, my name is Pastor Brian. I'm the pastor of the Blue Water Church of the Nazarene. Thank you for the privilege of praying with you and for you this evening. It is truly an honor. I would like to commend you for starting your meeting with prayer and asking God's guidance in your decision making today. Um, it is recorded in Psalms and Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Shall we pray? Dear Heavenly Father, you are worthy of our praise, respect because of who you are. Thank you for your love, mercy, grace. Thank you for your many blessings in this country, including the freedom to assemble and govern ourselves as this council is doing tonight. As we approach Christmas, help us to be in humble remembrance of the birth of your son, your love and grace that sent him for the purpose of saving us from our sins and restoring the broken relationship with us due to sin. Help us also to be mindful in preparing ourselves and others for the promised return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, guide this city council as they make decisions. Help them to listen to each other and to the people they represent with the intent to understand. Give them wisdom beyond themselves to make the best decisions. Bless their decisions collectively and individually to continue the prosperity of Marine City. Amen. Thank you. In the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Here. Commissioner Avery. Here. Commissioner Hendricks. Here. Commissioner Clausen. Here. Commissioner Lucky. Here. Commissioner Simpson. Here. Commissioner Turner. Here. City Manager Lucky. Here. All right, moving on to communications. We have a resignation letter from Gary Gabler. We have a special meeting notice for January 11th to talk about City Hall and residents, uh, residential parking ordinance and infrastructure project estimates. Make a motion to uh, accept and file communications with our thanks to um, Gary Gabler for his service to the community. Support. Questions and concerns on the communications? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Gary. Public comment. Anyone in, uh, in attendance will is welcome to address the city commission. Please state your name and address and please limit your comments to five minutes. Mrs. Walton. Thank you. Uh, Judy White, 8757 Anchor Bay Drive, uh, Clay Township. Um, I'm a member, of course, of uh, Friends of City Hall and I, I just wanted to speak to advertise our event, which is January 27, that's a Saturday. It's called the Blue Denim Ball. It's a casual dinner dance uh, to help us raise money to repair the uh, north uh, half of the grand staircase within City Hall. Tickets are $40 a piece. Ackett's is doing the catering. It's an open, full bar. That means drink as much as you want and um, we're going to have a 20-piece dance band, a dance contest, snazzy flannel shirt contest, and maybe a sexy dancing shoe contest, who knows. Uh, it's at Perch Point Conservation Club. It's a great place uh, to meet, a great place to you know, hold, have an event. Uh, I'm carrying some tickets with me tonight if you want to buy a few, thank you very much, and hope to see you there. permit every year since 87 when it was enacted and this year I was charged a $10 application fee so that the police chief the code ordinances um, city clerk could all review the application but I was handed a permit when I turned in my money and application 
because they're just giving it to anyone that had one last year. So I feel I should have a refund of my application fee. And also, you're looking at a new parking ordinance for next year. I will not be able to get a parking permit next year unless I have a licensed driver living in my home the way you have written it. I am not licensed to drive. I own the vehicle. But it clearly states that it will be issued to however many licensed drivers are living in the home and one guest. So you're leaving me out and any other per disabled person that don't have a license but has a vehicle. We're still working on that and we're looking for public comment on the ordinances as they're written. So that's a good point. And concerning the way they're handling this year's permits. And continued as of last year's correct mm -hmm. with the reduction instead of ten dollars per applicant per vehicle vehicle yeah. it's ten dollars for the first one then a dollar twenty five ten dollars for the application Asian. to process we have but, spreadsheet but and if the application does not have anyone looking at it or anything why do I need an application we still so have the to monitor we still have to update the information. Nothing has changed. There is no new information. Nothing has changed. And the ordinance states that I should have an one for a definite time. If you read the ordinance. Because I have no driveway. I have no place to park. I have been given a parking pit permit, as many as three, when my husband was alive and my daughter was at home in a year. This is, we're, as a continuation of the, the existing policy, we tried to reduce the cost even, so. But I was told that the reason for the cost for the application was because the code enforcement officer, the city clerk, the chief of police had to review it before the permit was given out. That did not happen. I was handed a permit. So I'm paying them to review something that they're not going to review. So I should be paying it, should I? Yeah, you should be paying it. Why? Everyone else has to. Only because they don't pay attention to what's going on? You have to still go through the proper paperwork. The proper paperwork. Nothing changed. We don't know if anything changes though, from year to year. No, you don't. <clears throat> but you also know that the ordinance states that it should have been issued for an indefinite length of time. <clears throat> I can read you the ordinance. Okay, please. When, in the opinion of the chief of police and code enforcement officer, the application applicant is without adequate area for the installation of sufficient off-street parking, a permit of indefinite duration shall be issued. Mm -hmm. Well. After 29 years, it should have been issued, right? According to the way that reads. And <laughs> that's, that's a snippet out of the ordinance. It's not the complete thing. What the ordinance says. I don't think this is something we can work out in public comment. That's not the whole ordinance. Okay. Can you get with her to try to resolve the issue for Certainly. us, please? Make sure it's taken care of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anyone else like to speak? Are you done, ma'am, by the way? Yes. When is the public meeting for the planning commission for the new ordinance? 
We haven't said it. Said we haven't one. said it yet. But we were, they've been taking uh, concerns at City Hall and anytime you see us at meetings also. At City Hall. Mm -hmm. Probably first reading will be the second meeting in January. You are reviewing, referring to the city offices mm -hmm. that are not handicap accessible, yeah, right? That's mm -hmm. a huge one. Mm -hmm. well, but the meeting will be here. Yep, yeah, the meeting's yeah. going to be here. Second yes, meeting. but they're taking comments. Right. Uh, both, you could also call that in as well or email whatever you're more comfortable email, with as well. Email. Those are all mm -hmm. options. Our city staff is available via phone and email regularly. Yes, the city mm -hmm. staff, we won't get into that. I was at city office. We all set that. Actually, in this packet, there's a copy of Rosalie, go ahead. the new ordinance in this packet. Proposed. Proposal. So if you look online, it'll be in this little packet. There'll be a and copy I read of it. it. It said that if I don't have a licensed driver living yep. in my home, I'm not entitled yep. to a permit. So that's not approved. I understand that, but I'm just saying. And so what, we need your feedback mm -hmm. so that we can improve that. I'm amazed that it even got printed out that way. We just got it. This. Somebody wrote that up, yeah. and whoever did has no concept of disability. That's correct. I have volunteered to review um, things that had to do with the disabilities because I can name places over and over that I can't get into. Well, that's not the only one. The rest of them are, there's issues with them too, as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah. I understand. So, you're all set then? I think yeah. so. Okay. Rosalie Squires, 211, Michigan. Uh, I live in Mariner's Landing Condos off King Road. I'm the longest resident of that condo group. I was one of the first seven that moved in, and I'm the only one left out of that first seven. First, I want to say that on Wednesday at Anita's place, there will be a fundraiser for the old newsboys. It's an all-you-can-eat pizza for $10, $8 for children. There will also be ongoing raffles and goes on from 5.30 to 8.30, and it's always a lot of fun. It's our last fundraiser of the year, so I know it's a busy time, but maybe you can come out and give us some more support. Um, also. Um, I want to mention good example about ADA that it is a federal law and it's been in place for over 27 years and we are not in compliance of a federal law and Fern shouldn't have to go through all kinds of hoops to um, to get into the building or to park at the building or to email people it should be ADA accessible and this whole thing that it cost twenty thousand two hundred thousand dollars that was in the weekly paper is just ridiculous it doesn't even cost twenty thousand dollars I can come and show you how you can do it um, but certainly for people that have chronic pain conditions like I do or like Fern that's got to use a device in order to get around uh, we're in this ADA status and our city should be complying with it next thing i want to talk about is this lease for the um, city hall for friends of city hall this lease is not in any way in favor of a city taxpayers it's only in in favor of the friends of city hall even to the point where they can sell it and you know i remember i i know i'd have to have somebody bring all those books to me because i can't keep climbing up those stairs of city hall but i'd like to look through all the meetings because i remember being at this meeting and we years ago at when it was still at the guy center that um we made an ordinance that you can't sell anything that's on um in a city park anything that's part of the city park and that city hall is I called the, uh, one of, some of the people that were on the board at that time and they said, you know, I'm not sure, but I think I remember that too. So I think that's somewhere in the rules. So I don't think you can say, sign this lease and say that that's okay. Second of all, people that are part of Friends of City Hall, they have to recluse themselves um, from voting because 
that's a conflict of interest. So people that are involved with City Hall, which many members of this board are, they should be reclusing, including themselves. And I just run over my master plan training that I went to that I paid for out of my own dime from Michigan State University Extension Service, and it talks all about that in there. And so um, I'm really not in favor of this lease. I mean, we, I just think this is nuts. We've paid over half a million dollars to rebrick that building. We paid $80,000 to pay for a, a grant writer to bring us 250000 The rest was all TIFA money. And now we're renting it out for, we're leasing it for a dollar to become whatever the city, they're not even, they don't even have a plan of what they're going to do with it in the time they're going to lease it. And to become a um, teen center, that's what we use this money for. I mean, you know, folks, we really don't have this money to pay. This just all those programs are nice and stuff, but we really taxpayers in this area really don't want this. They don't. They can't afford it, and I just think that this lease is ridiculous. Thank you very much for your time, and have happy holidays. Only 17 more days till Christmas. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? Hearing none. Moving on to approval of the agenda. I move to approve the agenda as presented. Any questions, concerns, addition, additions, deletions from the agenda? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Approval of minutes for the City Commission regular meeting November 16, 2017. Move to approve the Commission regular meeting minutes November 16, 2017, as presented. Support. Questions or corrections, deletions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Moving on to the consent agenda. Planning Commission meeting minutes October 9th. Business license for anointed. 2018 meeting schedule and cancellation of the uh, January 4th, 2018 meeting. Move to approve the consent agenda. Support. Any concerns on this? <clears throat> Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Avery. Yes. Commissioner Hender. Yes. Commissioner Foster. Yes. Commissioner Lovely. Yes. Commissioner Simpson. Yes. Turner? Yes. yes. Moving on to unfinished business. Uh, the skating rink from last meeting. Well, at the last meeting, we had this on the agenda. Uh, one of the primary things that needed to be done to consider uh, <coughs> purchase for the ice rink was to waive competitive bidding. We unfortunately did not get a unanimous motion to pass the unanimous you know, to approve the unanimous bidding so at this point it is at a standstill um, unless we get a motion to rescind the previous motion you could you could entertain a motion to recons if it was brought by the person who um, dissented, dissented could have a motion to reconsider the waiving of the competitive bidding and then you can move to the substance of the issue I think there was only one there was <coughs> no I won't do that okay. <coughs> new business we're down to a police vehicle For you, we received three bids for a police vehicle. Um, the Gorno, <coughs> sorry, the Gorno Ford bid, which was the my deal bid, was the lowest, and uh, Chief Haslip is recommending purchase of this for the amount of twenty-seven thousand six hundred and seventy dollars. I'll move the uh, acceptance of the request uh, for the purchase of the vehicle vehicle interceptor from Gorno Ford in the amount of twenty seven thousand six hundred and seventy dollars. Support. Motion and support. Do we have any questions <coughs> or concerns on it? Yes, Lisa. All right. Um, I guess I would have liked to have seen the copies from the dealerships just to see what the 
stuff was on them. Um, is this a f uh, front wheel drive or all wheel drive? Doesn't say. Um, what's the the vehicle that this is going to replace? Do you know what the mileage is for that vehicle? I believe it's eighty thousand. Okay, and the last time we were talking about this, I brought up about having specifications for when we replace police vehicles like a lot of the departments do, including the Sheriff's Department, which they usually wait till about 150000 <coughs> The vehicle that this is replacing, is that the vehicle that we fix the motor in? I don't think so. So that one only has 80,000 miles and we're already replacing it. Is this a car, one of the cars, or another SUV? I'm not sure which vehicle it is in particular now. Yeah, well, that would be nice to know, too. Um, the other thing is, is we keep buying new vehicles, and we're replacing vehicles that have low mileage, and then we're not still dealing with the issue of the idling. Now, the reason why we've had engine problems with several of the other ones is because we let them idle so long, and that idling is really hard on those motors, which in turn causes us to have to repair them all the time. And I've talked to the chief about trying to get the auxiliary batteries for the rear, which they're not that expensive. It's something that we need to look into because to continue to purchase these vehicles and not deal with that issue, we're just replacing a car with another car and we're just going to ruin that motor too. I have previous conversations with you and, and I think that might be something that we could have as a test in one vehicle. <coughs> Get some estimates for that. So, based on all that, I know this will get approved by everybody else, but until we get some specs on these vehicles and <coughs> we start doing this properly so that we're not replacing vehicles too soon and we get some of this anti-idling in, I'm not approving um, a vehicle just to waste more taxpayer money for a vehicle that's not going to be taken care of properly. So anyway, that's my, I, I just hope that we can get some of this stuff fixed up um, and get some of these things in place. I know I was told last time that we were going to. Here we are buying a car and still nothing. So um, that's my sp on that. Mr. Avery. I see a packet that the request for bid that was submitted to the vendors is here. And I'm going to assume that all these items that were requested on the bid are in the vehicles that we are looking at. If there's anything more in it, well, that's fine. But this explains what we were asking to buy. Well, there's more to the bids. That's the only reason why I'd like to see all the specs on the vehicles. It would just be nice to see the bids. I mean. If I uh, remember correctly, um, uh, these vehicles came through the state process and were recommended vehicles by the state process, if well, I remember that correctly. Th that's the my deal. Yeah. Yes. And yes. And, um, you know, so a lot of people that know a lot more than I do have gone through all of this and this is their, their best uh, vehicle, <clears throat> their recommendation. And also, uh, we do have an extremely good mechanic who works on those cars, and they are well taken care of. And I think we get everything out of them that we can. <coughs> I agree that we do have a good mechanic, but he tends to have to work on them a lot because we idle them a lot. Um, and the specifications are an important thing. Um, being that I worked in specification and worked on these police cars and worked on what's in them, um, and I did it for a lot of years. I do know the specs, and this doesn't even have half of what you may want in some of these vehicles. These vehicles are totally different than a regular vehicle, and uh, we still should be able to see it. Anything else? Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Hendrick. No. Commissioner Clausen. Yes. 
Commissioner Yes. Yes. Commissioner Turner. Yes. Mayor Vandenbosch. Yes. Commissioner Avery. Yes. Motion carries. Moving on to the return sludge pump station proposal. Uh, Mike might need to help me out on yes. this one a little bit. <laughs> um, this, in essence, is a proposal from our engineering consultant, and we have some equipment at the wastewater treatment plant that has failed and we're looking for their assistance to help us with the replacement of that um a return pump that's on the back side of the um <clears throat> wastewater plant we have two screw pumps back there just like the ones up front one failed completely um, we have to replace it with that screw pump again which is going to cost over seventy five thousand dollars or we can go ahead and get two submersibles and put them in there and for a cost of under probably under 50 we're hoping anyways don't hold me to that but mm -hmm. two of them in there to do the work and to keep the DEQ happy and um, lower cost lower maintenance What's the lifetime of the submersible compared to a screw pump they're about the same yeah about the same you give it 20 25 years out of them these screw pumps are going on 32 33 years old the last time we rebuilt one we put it back in cost us seventy five thousand dollars two weeks later the whole shaft snapped they had to pull it back out put it back in and you know these things are old they're very old how much work is it changing a submersible if one you had a failure in one is it are they no, quick no. we have bars we can lift them right out then and okay. slide them right back in anybody else in the area does use the same process I'm going to go out and look at Mount Clemens they do they okay. just they got rid of their um, screw pumps and put in some merciples okay it's a grinding pump it's a grinder pump that's going to be sitting down in the bottom with a cavity it's going to suck up it's going to grind and push it up on top and then that heads back to the plant again the, top, the head of the plant yes yes I really just want to comment I mean the, the letter Tetra Tech put out to us is pretty self-explanatory but it's a it's a great example of this deferred maintenance and, and equipment going well beyond their life cycle of the price point that we have on it under communications we have our infrastructure project requests and we have lots and lots and lots of this going on and so this is just for anyone following along it's just a, a snippet of exactly how big of a, a job this is to, to have to tackle of how to fund all of this. And that, that there's no right or wrong answer, but this is just a small piece of the pie. And you could probably come up with a thousand projects like this, I'm sure, Mike, but it's just a, a prime example of how much, you know, aging infrastructure is really costing us. And it's not unique to our city either. But the plants are getting older, mm -hmm. and uh, they are going to need some attention here very shortly. And or else we're going to be coming on this every year, spending 50. Seventy-five thousand dollars a year in there. You know, one of our major screw pumps out front go. You're talking a lot, a lot of money. Two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars. You know, for one of those, and we'll do the same <coughs> thing out there as we're doing in the back side of it. We'll put the submersible pumps down there, and you know, hopefully that'll save us some cost. Mm -hmm. Mr. Avery, I'd like to add, just based on what Commissioner Simpson said. Uh, in listening to the discussion here, the pump that failed is 33 years old. The estimated life of the newer pumps, either kind, is 25 years. So we've already run this system along too long. <coughs> and so that is to point out that your statement is very correct. And I wanted to make sure it came up again. Anyone else? I just to finish off, I just appreciate you guys trying to tackle it from a non-traditional standpoint, too. You guys have always done a good job. I think Tetra Tech really helps us kind of cut costs where we can without cutting <coughs> the stability of the system. So I appreciate that you guys are pursuing, you know, a different type of solution to this to be cost effective. Well, that's what we're trying to do. And plus, with these newer machinery we put in, we can also save on electricity costs, too, on these. Because these things run 24-7, seven days a week. I mean, they run constantly. Anyone else? Well, I'll make a motion that we approve a budget of $6,900 to complete the work 
for the return sludge pump station corrections. It's put. Any other questions? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Lovely. Yes. Commissioner Simpson. Yes. Commissioner Turner. Yes. Mayor Van Bush. Yes. Commissioner Avery. Yes. Commissioner Hendrick. Yes. Commissioner Moving on to the Friends of City Hall lease agreement. was provided to me from representatives of Friends of City Hall. Uh, this is something that there were some terms in here that they have put in here that are really kind of the things that are up for discussion. They templated this off of the River Rec Teen Zone lease, uh, worked with the attorney on language that they were looking for in the contract and, and he he rolled that language into the lease that we had with River Rec Teen Zone and, and melded the two in a way um, to make it work for Friends of City Hall. Uh, also ensured to make sure that some of the protections of the city were in the clauses as well. Uh, there are quite a few things that I think are still insufficient at this point. We do not have any of the exhibits that should be included with this document. Um, there is also, in essence, a placeholder amount for a, a placeholder amount for a final purchase price of 250000 That's a number that was just a random number as a placeholder. It's not anything that is firm or final. Um, <clears throat> the terms in the contract are really something that Friends of City Hall proposed and they wanted to get this before City Commission for consideration. Uh, I think at this point it's probably just a starting point. And uh, Judy White's here. If you have any questions, I think she'd be able to address those for you. I'm just wondering uh, if we have it on the agenda to discuss City Hall and that building is part of City Hall. Aren't we moving a little fast here on this if we have to put City Hall back into the, the mix? And that's something for you guys to take into consideration. This was a request to be on the agenda. Um, we honored that request. Um, obviously, there are a lot of other issues at hand and it's um, you guys to consider whether whether you move forward or, <coughs> or table this at this point I think that point should be well taken it was requested to be put on the agenda there is no action required at this point other than to begin discussion on what and I, this is and I feel table and it would be because we've got it's listed as a potential for you know to have and we haven't even had the town hall meeting yet on the um, what we're what the citizenry would like to see done with the um, city hall. And I'd like to make a motion to table. Should it be table or postpone? Postpone. Postpone. Yeah. postpone. To a date. Postponement requires a date. You have to <coughs> sign a, a meeting date. You can do that by second or first meeting of whatever month. So January 11th January. would be the meeting. Your yeah. public meeting is January 11th. Right. So it has to be after that. You probably want to. The 18th then. Or the first well, meeting first in February. February. First, first meeting in February. I think that would be wiser. January 1st right. is the first meeting in February. Postpone it till February 1st. Make the motion. I'd support that. You make you yeah. postpone? Make the, the postpone, yes. Motion and uh, <laughs> support on the floor. The postpone the February 1st. Yes. Any other? Concerns. I have a, just two discussion points. That, uh, just to point out a um, couple things. Uh, the lease, as it currently sits, um, requests the South Side Carriage Entrance in Exhibit Three, which we don't have. That's currently in the Friends of uh, the River Rec Teen Zone lease. So that's something that will have to be decided amongst groups, and then, you know, I guess um, potentially resign the River Rec Teen Zone lease if that's something that uh, the board is 
willing to do. So it, that's currently as it's, it's asking for something that's in an already approved and signed lease. So um, it's something I would like to see too. And I know this is in the works, but uh, since we're discussing it too, is a, you know, a, a business plan too. You know, we currently have a, uh, an agreement in support of the city, but um, yeah, it'd be nice to see a, a business plan um, to go along with this. So that's that's all I want to bring up. And I know those things are in the works too. So this is way to have something to say too about why we're doing this. Get your can. <laughs> uh, we are currently at work on those exhibits. Mm -hmm. We're not done with them. And the uh, business plan is um, one subject away from completion. So we're very close on that also. And probably we'll have those things together uh, early part of next week. Um, I've written some remarks here, and I'd, l I'd like to read them to you if you have the patience for that. Um, Friends of City Hall exists for three reasons. Um, to preserve to protect and to restore the building. We're a federally, a federally approved 501c3, uh, that is a nonprofit corporation. From day one, we have worked to educate the public about the building and to raise money to restore it. Per our bylaws, every cent that we raise must go to this building. In leasing the building from the city, we can embark on a campaign to acquire foundation grant money to restore the interior of the building. At this time, uh, the city does not have, um, does not qualify for major restoration grants. There is no other entity in the city that has the legal structure, the experience, the preparation, or the focus of Friends of City Hall. To be eligible, we must submit to an independent audit and establish a profit-making business operation in City Hall. We have submitted our first documents for the audit, and we have written our business plan under the guidance of the Small Business Development Center. We have an excellent working relationship with Lindsay Davis, Linda Davis Kirksey and uh, the grant writer and Michael Kirk, the certified historical architect. City Hall is a unique building in a unique part of the city. It offers a one-of-a-kind place for special events, and we intend to capitalize on that. The specialness of City Hall and its style and historicity make it without peer. It has tremendous drawing power. The Opera House is ideal for weddings, celebrations, presentations, performances, and city government meetings. The main floor is perfect for tourist information, a gift shop, an office, and communal meeting space. The basement is ideal for a business incubator, office lease space, and small meeting rooms. Our business plan offers things that are good for the city, good for the building, and good for the community. It is not our intention to take from the city, but to give to the city. Ultimately, we wish to present a fully restored, functional, beautiful, working building. One that is not only restored, but equipped with modern amenities, and complete accessibility for everyone. Other alternatives, if they exist, would surely not be this altruistic. Thank you. I'd like to mention, too, because somebody said something about there's nothing in here about you having to sell this to us. All we have is the first right of refusal. If you do go to sell it to somebody else, mm -hmm. you need to give us a chance at it. That's not our desire. Yes, Lisa. Um, <coughs> I read through this, and um, I hate to say it's a terrible lease agreement, <laughs> um, but I'll wait for all my comments until we take it up at the next meeting. Just one quick question um, to our city attorney. 
Uh, we heard in public comment tonight that it's a conflict of interest for Friends of City Hall board members to even vote on such a lease. So my understanding is conflict of interest would mean you would have to have some sort of financial interest in that. Can you speak to that? I can give you a complete memo on that. I'll circulate that through the city manager okay. quickly. That'd be a comes up thing. at, uh, but generally you're on the right track. Okay. Um, I just want to make there, sure there's, you know. all, there's all, all, always a misconception on abstaining from a vote or what a conflict of interest is. It's very defined. Abstaining from a vote is very narrow, and conflicts of interest are very narrow. But I can I have some material for you on that. Since we heard it, I just want to make sure that we're addressing it. That's part of our due diligence. So thank you. Will do, sir. Thank you, Mr. Avery. Unfortunately, <clears throat> our rules for the commission don't allow us to abstain so we have to vote yes or no that's how near all they are <laughs> yeah so that that's why i said that the rules on abstaining are fairly narrow <laughs> but but there's a misconception that you can abstain from voting uh okay. you know as a conscientious uh, objector of some sort but it's very narrow yes abstaining I was going to say, uh, one of the reasons in listening to the discussions on, you know, to get it started now is transparency. We want everybody to know what's going on. We like to hear ideas. Don't save them up and sandbag or ambush, uh, you know, hear ideas. If you've got uh, something you think should be included in that, uh, we'd love to hear it. So we're motion. working. Yeah, motion. Or let's... let's uh Let's call for a vote on that, and that's going to be just a voice vote on that. We don't need a roll call, no spending of funds. Yeah. Just, just in the future, just for your, your, your ongoing knowledge, when there's a motion to table or a motion to postpone, there's no, there's no more discussion on the substance of the topic. You only discuss the motion to postpone, just so you know. All in favor I'm to... All in favor to postpone. Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Moving on to the Historical Society Marrier Maze. <coughs> okay. I'm Heather Bachram, and I'm a secretary of the Historical Society. I have a few things I'd like to hand you. Um, some of you were not here when we first started working on this. This, uh, there's one I hope for at least all the commissioners. Uh, some of these I've only got three of each, so if you wouldn't mind sharing. So I was afraid I'd run out of ink before, um, That's, the, the circle itself right. is right. 40 some. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm really here to update you on uh, what's going on with this project uh, because as a lot of you know, we first got permission from the city commission uh, about six years ago to use uh, Broadway Park. And at the time, we had uh, the promise of two very nice grants from the Community Foundation based on getting a large grant from a national grant that was supposed to go to small towns and communities. And Three were awarded to Michigan, one went to Detroit, 
One went to, I think, Kalamazoo, and the other one was an equally large place. I don't remember. Anyway, um, so it was put on hold for a while. Uh, on the 4th of October, uh, some of us met at Anita's, members of the Historical Society and anybody else who was interested. And um, it was to discuss the Outdoor Maritime Museum because uh, there are people who have uh, been asking that uh, we add to that. And in fact, I think Georgia Phelan, oh, there she is. She actually did this, printed this brochure up, and she was very interested in that. We did uh, decide to add the Mariner's Maze when it is done because uh, historically it is very pertinent to uh, Marine City. All of these um, freighters were, and uh, their schooners as well, uh, were uh, built in Marine City around the turn of the cent century and uh, sort of mid-1900s. <coughs> um, I guess the, the Maritime uh, Museum was started when the town purchased the Peach Island Light, and that was the first one. And then since then, other things have been gathered. So it was um, <laughs> some suggestions were made, and we decided to move forward with the landscaping of the project. Now, originally, we had thought of it being closer to the road at Broadway Park, but since that time, the Garden Club has done some really beautiful landscaping there. And so I went down to the park and measured out further down towards the river. And some of our members felt that was a better place anyway. Um, there is plenty of room for this. It would require the removal of one tree. And in our original plan, it meant four trees would have to come down. There's a minimal leveling that would need to be done. So uh, we ha have, we're in the process of getting quotes from two landscaping companies to do the, um, the two circles of uh, boxwoods with pathways between mm -hmm. and the um, plantings out at the edge as you see all the way around. Uh, and we also want to put um, crescent style seating in, in that area. Now we have designated funds for this, um, so we would like to go ahead with that. But um, we also, this fall, I was approached by somebody who wanted to be anonymous and um, willing to put up some money for challenge uh, money. And so we want to uh, take advantage of that. Um, it would also lead to uh, getting a grant again at the Community Foundation. And with the money that we would like to raise for that, we could do the inner circle. We can't do it all at once uh, because we'll still have to raise money, but we should be able to do the inner circle and two of the mosaics. Um, and that would be uh, essentially the first and second phase of the plan. The third fa phase, of course, would be to um, add all of the, um, the other outside pathway, linking it to the inside. And the fourth phase would be to add the, the rest of the mosaics as we raise the money. The area for the mosaics would be planned in the um, initial um, construction of the pathway so that what was there could be removed and then the mosaic put in. Questions, yes. May I pass one of these around for the audience to look at, just to give us some idea? Oh. Thank you. Get 
Yes. Um, okay, so what is the total size of this particular thing? Okay, if you look at, um, I wish I brought, I had another drawing with some the sizes. I'm afraid I didn't bring it with me. If you go to the outside, this is supposed to look kind of like a ship's wheel. If you go to the very outside, it's 60 feet. The inside, I believe, is 45 feet across. But I can. Yeah, 60 feet to the outside. Y yes, yes. I, I remember when this came up at the commission many years, and it's been more than six, it's closer to 10 or more. I found well, the minutes in the 2008 July, and that was an update, um, so it was prior to that. Um, well, this thing is huge, and my concern is, um, I'm kind of concerned about maintenance. Well, the maintenance would be up to the Historical Society, and we plan on uh, creating a maintenance fund for it. And we would also do the trimming of the boxwoods and so on. This park also is used for a lot of the concerts and stuff, which now means this will pretty much take up the bulk of the park. Well, I've noted, I, I have seen the concerts you're talking <coughs> about, mm -hmm. uh, Lisa, but I, they look like they're closer to the road when they're set up. This is quite 60 far feet down. is still pretty good size. I guess my only concern is that we're putting so much in these parks, and this was, I know it was done a long time ago and, and boards changed, but it's, it's, we're getting so much in the parks that, you know, I'm concerned about people wanting to just sit there and enjoy the parks, and then if these, I don't know how high these will be. No more than three feet, you know, whatever is acceptable. I mean, you don't want to block anybody's well, view, and of course there will be seating, eight uh, seats, mm -hmm. bench-style curved uh, seats for mm -hmm. people to sit on. And what is your total cost on the project? Well, we don't have the total cost today on it because we're only doing the first phase of this. Mm -hmm. I remember years ago the cost I had heard was $100,000. Well, I think it would, if you that counted... That was years ago. Uh, yes, and if you counted the mosaics, it would be considerably more. So but that 100000 did not include the mosaics. Yeah, so that was, you know, say 10 years ago, and so your inflationary prices, so you're looking at a pretty hefty amount of money. That's why we want to do it in phases. And a lot will, now, if we start with the, the landscaping, uh, it won't disturb anything. It should be attractive, that and the seating. Should anything happen that we don't get enough for the, for the, uh, first for the first or the inner pathway um, we can still continue to raise money for that so I couldn't tell you whether we would finish that by the end of next year or not mm -hmm. but we do want to do the landscaping um, I'm just a little um, apprehensive about doing it. I can understand doing it in phases, but not at least the the whole center, you know, complete without. Well, we would do the center, but, you know, at this point we would be doing just the landscaping and the seating until we found out how much we had. But what we'd like to do is that center part. That would be at, right after, um, you know, as soon as we raise, hopefully with this challenge money, that we can um, raise enough to do that. Yeah, I and guess if, we, yeah. if we didn't do it, it's not going to take away from the park. So if you never get the money to finish it, then what? Well, you still have a beautiful um, boxwood maze. <laughs> And I, I'm hoping we definitely will have the money to do it. Okay. But in the meantime, we'll have to maintain around it and, and hope that you can maintain it. That's I just, 
Yeah, I, I like to speak up. I, I fully support this. Um, mm -hmm. Matter of fact, I'll remind everybody on this board that it has been approved. The same exact plan has been approved. Mm -hmm. That location. I, I understand where you're at. It took a long time to get the funding, but it's great to see it's finally starting to happen. So I fully support you. Thank you. Uh, they show this, and I'm new, so uh, I, this just shows me what the maze is going to look like. But in perspective with where it's going to locate in the park, I like to see a site plan mm -hmm. and where it is with everything else. Well, I could certainly take you down there and show you. I also like to see the material. Um, we, and if I don't, it may have been in the original plan. I'd just like to see what you were going to use, material-wise, for oh, planting for, and the. Uh, well, the uh, plantings uh, are going to be boxwood. Right. And. Because um, there's quite a few on the boxwood. That's one area I'm pretty good with. So. Yeah. Um, and then the little plants at the end. I don't know whether I brought information Heather, on that. Heather, didn't you have all that detailed information at one time? I know it was all talked about. Here. Yes. Yeah. Originally, we were going to um, put molded cement seating in. Right. You know that included the inner boxwood, but um, <clears throat> that is very expensive, okay. and so. Um, I have been looking at um, seating and also um, I want to get some quotes from landscaping companies. There are a variety of ways that it can be done. Okay. I didn't bring all the pictures mm -hmm. of the seating. Weren't you talking, unless I didn't hear you uh, correctly, um, that you were talking about relocating it further closer down to the river closer than to what the, the river. original is? Yeah. That's why I was asking about yes. the site plan. Yeah. To see where it's going to actually yeah, be. Yeah, I had the, the original site plan, but I don't think I have that with me. And I didn't feel because that would be incorrect now. I didn't right. bring that with me. I'm pretty sure I didn't. But I'm sure we can do that. <clears throat> Yes, I guess I'd like to know if we can kind of hold off on some of this because it sounds like a lot of this project has changed. I mean, it's been 10 years at least. Well, okay. the only change is the molded. Well, it sounds like some materials and some other stuff, but, you know, I mean, it's a 10-year-old project, and we need to start looking at these projects that are approved years ago, and then, you know, 10 years down the road, we're still sitting here looking at a project. It, it would be a lot of cement and brick. I, I don't know, you know, what, you, what you're looking for. Well, how it would be constructed, I guess. Okay. This is an update of the Mariner's Maze. Um, Heather's just explaining what's going to happen here. It's not going to start tomorrow. There are a couple landscape companies that are looking this over, giving us input, giving us prices. Um, Basically, what would be nice is if we could do this planting and put the benches in, and it would stimulate more people to uh, to make contributions. Um, it's going to be expensive overall, but it'll get done. And again, this is just an update. There's, you know, we get, this whole thing is going to be on a plot plan. It'll be construction drawings and ready to go with everything called out all the specifications before any a shovel goes into the ground so before we start yeah Absolutely. so could we postpone that until well we this is just this? an update yeah correct yeah. Yeah. we're not looking right. for movement on this okay. right you're no, just no. updating it i just I thought to make was, that well, based on this i thought she was looking for and we would like to do the plantings next spring if possible and that depends again on the, uh, right. the feedback we get from the landscape. Right. You know, they're telling us how to save money. That right. you know, this would look good. That would look good. So it's mm -hmm. it's an ongoing thing. But the whole thing is, it's starting up again. Finally, I mean, the historic society went through some changes. We've had a recession that lasted about four or five years. So that took some time off of it. Mm -hmm. It almost got dumped completely. <laughs> but uh, this lady doesn't give up very easy. So. <laughs> 
I was going to say, if a person wanted to contribute to this, mm -hmm. uh, they would donate it to the Historical Society with a memo on the check? Yes, we have uh, designated funds, so you could put um, in the Mariner's Maze. Thank you, Heather, for all that you do and are doing. Okay. Do you, want, you can yes. keep those photographs if you want. Just a comment. I'd like to thank the Heather and the Historic Society and all the people that are involved in this project. I think it's great. It's a tremendous gift to the city. They're not asking for money from us. Um, kind of keeps puts me in mind of the new restrooms that certain people didn't think needed to go there, mm -hmm. but they turned out to be a wonderful gift also. So if you look at it that way, um, I encourage everybody to join you in the effort. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, moving on to uh, TIFA board member absence. an issue with one of the members of our TIFA board that has not been in attendance and actually our packets have been returned and phone calls have gone unanswered. There is a procedure for uh, declaring a vacancy in the board due to missing four consecutive regular meetings and at this point we're asking the board to declare that position vacant so that we can hopefully fill it at the next meeting. Can I get a motion to declare that seat empty? I'll make a motion to declare that seat empty. Second that motion, please. Any comments on it? I want to say tip of board. Tip of board. Okay. Yes, Mrs. Suckler. Um, yeah, I was. I just wondered, is she not all? Did she not also put her name in for the historic commission? She was on three boards. Yeah, she was uh, alternate for on the Zoning Board of Appeals. But wasn't she on the Historic Commission too, no? I believe no? so, no. Okay. And um, I believe she's an alternate for Board of Review as well. So those are the three boards. Okay. Okay. But I, I, it's did. my she belief she moved away. She did. The house sold. Yeah. Was, uh, I checked the record, so it's my belief she moved away. She was beamed up. Motion support on the floor. I just want to say clearly we don't take something like this lightly. We're always asking for people to come forward and, you know, uh, work with the city and be a member of the board. But clearly much diligence has been done to try and work with the individual and many points of contact and, you know, zero points of contact in return. So I, you know, I don't think any of us take this lightly, but, you know, it's important to have board seats filled so these boards can be active and productive. Any other questions or concerns? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Moving on to the data sharing program, regional asset management pilot program. Uh, a couple months ago, I went to a SEMCOM meeting, and one of the points that they were discussing at the time was a pilot program for regional asset management. This was something that was really started by Governor Snyder. What he's looking to do is get an indication of the infrastructure in communities. In other words, kind of have a sampling size of the infrastructure, age, uh, material, uh, replacement construction costs. This is similar to the SAW grant process that we went through. So with the SAW grant, we had an opportunity to be able to methodically go through and review our sewer systems and and have the the system TV'd so that we can see the condition at least to the extent that we were able to get access to them and also put together mapping for it. Uh, this I think is something that eventually is going to come down the pipeline from the state that they're going to require us to have all the information for all of our infrastructure. This is a pilot program, like I mentioned, I don't think that anybody else in St. Clair County is moving forward with this. Uh, it was rolled out to SEMCOG and then also, I guess, one of their equivalents on the western side of the state. Uh, the primary people that were at that meeting were Oakland, Macomb, Wayne County participants. 
Uh, this is something where there's no financial commitment to us. Uh, I've already provided them with information, but this is something that they do need to have this <coughs> agreement approved so that we have the understanding that any information that we get from other communities has to go through a process for any type of FOIA. Um, they have put the agreement together to go through the Michigan State Police because of the unique nature of the infrastructure and that it is something that uh, does potentially pose a, a risk to communities from a safety standpoint and with the Michigan State Police as the agency that the agreement is under, they in essence would be the ones responsible for the FOIA. Um, this isn't something that, as I said, would cost us any money. I see it as something where we get an opportunity to have some mapping and data analysis done at no cost to us as part of this pilot program. Uh, I really don't have a lot of involvement with it. It's not something that I'm going to be going to a lot of meetings or um, getting a lot of feedback from. This is something that they're fast tracking and they plan to have a report to the governor by April. So this is just something that uh, if we choose to do this would need to be approved by the commission. Yes, Mr. Avery. I would like to make a motion that we approve joining the data sharing agreement. Support. Any other questions or concerns on it? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry. Moving on to resolution 19-2017, Redevelopment Ready Community Program. Redevelopment Ready Communities are something that is a um, state uh, group that's under the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Uh, this is something that is a requirement for a community to at least be engaged in the process to become a redevelopment ready community to be able to get any funding through patronicity and indications that I've heard is also any funding through MEDC. Uh, there's no binding or financial obligation for this. It will take some time to work through the, the system. Even if we elect not to become a redevelopment ready community, we at least need to take the steps to be engaged. Those steps are passing the resolution, providing information regarding where we are with things like our master plan and our ordinances, which I've already done that evaluation and given them information where our ordinances are and, and master <coughs> plans, where they can locate that. And um, one thing about this is the, the resolution, we actually passed it back in 2013. So it has been passed once before. I spoke with the representative at the state and we, we both agreed that because there has been some turnover on the board, um, it would be better just to get a reaffirmation from this current board to continue on with the redevelopment ready uh, program. So if, if the board is interested in this, uh, that would be what we're looking for is just a resolution of support at this point. I make a motion to uh, approve resolution 19 uh, 2017 uh, to be an engaged redevelopment ready community support any questions or concerns on it uh, roll call vote please Commissioner Lovely. yes Commissioner Simpson. yes Commissioner Turner. yes yes Commissioner yes yes Commissioner yes Commissioner Fawson. yes <coughs> Moving on to financial business, we have disbursements, including payroll for $265,350.08. Move to approve disbursements, including payroll, $265,350.08. Motion and support. Questions and concerns?
Anybody have anything? Roll call vote, please. Yes. yes. Commissioner Turner. Yes. Mayor Vandenbosch. Yes. Commissioner Avery. Yes. Commissioner Hendrick. No. Commissioner Clausen. Yes. Commissioner Lockwood. Yes. All right, city manager's report. I attended the police screen meeting and last night. I've also met with the planning consultant. We're working on the next step for our ordinances. Uh, we've pretty much got that ready for planning commission. Uh, I've also met with the grant writer up at Community Foundation. We're working on getting some more grants, and I'll be meeting with her and representatives from DEQ and MEDC in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're still looking for applications for ZBA. I know we're past the posted deadline, but we, we still need people. So if anybody can get their applications into our office, we'll get those before city commission at the next meeting for appointment. That's it. Anyone have questions for the city manager? Okay, moving on to uh, commissioner privilege. Mr. Avery, you'd like to start us off? I will be with my time. Oh. Thank you. This is left. I'd just like to thank everybody involved with the Merry Time Christmas. It was a great event, and the weather uh, was really great, although I guess the ice sculptures weren't real happy with all the sun, but the rest of us were, and I thank the, the Area Chamber of Commerce for that. Also, this is the time when you start getting inundated with opportunities to give to causes, uh, some worthy, some not so much, and uh, it can be kind of overwhelming and we have a tendency to say, well, I'm just not going to give uh, to anything. But I had a, 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 a plan that was put forth that has worked very well, and that is, first of all, to avoid scams, insist that you get a hard copy. Don't work over the internet, get a hard copy so that you can actually uh, mail in uh, a check and uh, the other thing is gather those hard copies together and sit down with your family and go through them and decide which one you really want to support, which one uh, um, is something that uh, speaks to you and, uh, and, and give your whatever it is. I mean, I know a lot of this $5, $10, whatever it is that you've been blessed with to share uh, to make that kind of a, a family event for the season instead of a, a uh, I don't know, a, a nuisance, <laughs> among other things, too. Also, all our prayers and support go out to the fire-ravaged uh, communities in California. And also, uh, not this weekend, but the following weekend, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers are playing the New England Patriots, and my nephew has signed a contract to sing the national anthem at that. So if you well. look at it, his name is Clinton Clegg, and uh, uh, we're looking forward to him uh, doing that. Patriots by 20, I guess. Mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, the Rotary Club sponsored uh, that uh, run over the uh, weekend, and it turned out real good. And uh, it was a success, so they are planning to do it uh, every year now, it's like a yearly thing, so see what happens there. And also the Rotary Club is selling Christmas trees up at Ward Cockrell, the old school where the church is now. And if anybody is in dire need of uh, having a tree and can't afford it, get a hold of a, a Rotary member. Thank you. Nothing to make A couple of things. Um, for the old newsboys for our... Uh, sale there was a couple of conflicting amounts out there we ended up doing six thousand four hundred and forty eight Joe dogs um, a new record <laughs> um, most of us don't even want to see a hot dog after that day <laughs> so but um, it went pretty well and um, and I appreciate people's patience because it's hard to produce uh, we were doing them at about uh, 860 some hot dogs an hour so it's uh, it's rough for all of us standing in the back there and remember, the Old Newsboys paper sales are going to start tomorrow and Saturday, so be careful because they're going to be standing out in the street. Um, but please support them. And there's also a fundraiser uh, this Saturday at Gars, but there's a $10 cover charge. It goes to several different um, 
charities, but it's a fundraiser that uh, they're putting on from 11 in the morning till 5 p.m. at night. Um, and the last thing is a little bit on the, I know we didn't get to discuss the ice rink, and I want to tell people I'm not against it, but I have a whole lot of ideas, and I think um, there's a lot of information that we're missing out there that we could do this a lot more economically. Um, and I think we could even rely on some of the people that we have locally to manufacture some of the stuff that would be a lot more durable than plastic. Um, so hopefully, uh, maybe I can give you a lot of that information and you guys can look it over. Thank you. Nothing, thank you. Um, I've just got a few things. Uh, I wanted to thank everybody at the uh, Tyler Coulter uh, Memorial Run on Thanksgiving morning. We had a great time. We had a, a lot of runners. It was uh, a lot of fun. And then I got asked to help on the other run the next week. So I got my 5Ks in. Too bad I didn't run them. But <laughs> I stood there and blocked traffic anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people asking for things right now. And there's a lot of needy people out here. And, uh, and it's one of our larger... Uh, times for suicide so if you see somebody that needs assistance please you know offer a hand it is you know it's a blue time year for certain people so please look out for other people and uh, your pets because it's going to get cold this weekend so it's going to be the first cold shot and your snow plowers are going to be out and I bet you there'll be a few angry snow plowers so just watch out for uh, the orange lights you might want to mention we're supposed to get snow Saturday and about the parking yes. on the streets because we get the snow. <coughs> yeah, we will have the, the enforcing the uh, parking ordinance for uh, the snow removal coming up. I'll make uh, a motion to adjourn. Support. All in favor. Aye. 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 Carried.